Is this what the car of the future looks like? Or maybe this? In any area where technology is rapidly changing, there are no rules anymore. The rule book is being rewritten. The new electric motor gives designers the chance to reinvent the shape of the car. Finally, we're back to radical design. They're innovations. Basically, electromobility means the freedom to design the space in which we move as we wish. You need to keep changing, you know. Don't rely on what is today, because today is gone tomorrow. The prototypes built by car makers show that car design is undergoing a radical change. This is Paolo Tuminelli, a professor of design who has been specializing in car shapes for years. For Rev, he met the chief designers of automakers and former Formula One racing drivers who are campaigning for a healthier environment. And the heads of the world's biggest car makers. He looked over the shoulders of the makers and shakers of the car industry, who've recently been making and shaking like almost never before, to find out what the car of the future might look like. The industry has realized that a new drive form also entails an entirely new architecture. It's like the change back then from horse-drawn carriage to automobile. And that's how it has to be for the electric motor. Will the change also mean the death knell for the ultra-popular SUV? For a hundred years, car design was built around one essential component, namely the engine. The motor. Power, transmission, cooling, the mechanics where the car and the driver sat somewhere beside the gear stick. Electromobility means the freedom to completely redesign the space we're dealing with. Because electromobility cuts the mechanical components of an engine by two-thirds, and the remaining third can easily be stored in modules. The big hood on the motor is no longer needed. And electric motors don't need air cooling. So the space traditionally occupied by the radiator, for so long the face of the car, now offers room to explore creative ideas. The front of the car was reserved for the motor, but luckily we don't need so much space under the hood of an electric car, so we can use the front for other purposes. For a built-in coffee machine, for example. The ID Life, a Volkswagen prototype, is a shining example of how new materials are changing the way cars look. ID Life concept is taking mobility very far in the path of sustainability in terms of materials. So the whole body of the car is, by, is from recycled PET, so it's actually plastic. Uh, and then it has like a bio lacquer on top and that's it, no coloring, no nothing. Uh, inside is, is all the wood from the fallen trees. The Alcantara is also made by uh, recycled PET. And that is one of the coolest things, that we don't need leather anymore, we don't need animals anymore. We need to get to a circular economy. That's a challenge, huh? but that's where we have to get to. Another paragon of a sustainable circular economy is the BMW iVision Circular. Only materials that have already been used at least once in another vehicle went into this one. With this concept car, a major German car maker has dared to try on something new. BMW's iconic kidney grille is getting a modern day facelift. I do industrial design, and for me, industrial design is a cross between engineering and art. Free art. Engineering is all about problem solving, art is about inspiring. Decor in the car plays a major role. We're going back to the roots of design, art deco. The concept is the same on the inside. The 
It's like great grandma's living room. There are traces of Art Deco. There is velour. There are borders. But no bucket seats, no sporting inclinations. More relaxed. I can move. In general, electric cars have more space for the passengers. And I think as self-driving cars become a reality, we'll have time to take a closer look at the interior as an extension of your living space. In some of Audi's prototypes, the passenger cabin even grows when the car is in autonomous mode. The steering wheel folds away, and where you would normally see a cockpit with controls, you find yourself in a spacious living room. The focus on self-driving cars has sharpened the attention to the car interior, which is becoming the dominant factor in car design, turning the whole design process inside out. We have created space, and space has become something of a luxury in many areas of life. Driving reimagined. I can't put it any other way. Now we are seeing the whole stage. And this fantastic view, to be able to look all around you and soak in the atmosphere, it's quite the show. All we need now is the popcorn. The VW ID Life also puts on a show. In self-driving mode, a monitor pops up, and driver and passengers alike can watch TV lying down if they prefer. The VW features retractable door handles, and slim cameras replace the rear view mirrors. It's all about aerodynamics, which are crucial to an electric car's range. A simple teardrop-shaped chassis, like the one on the Mercedes EQS, has ideal aerodynamics. And unfortunately, that means that sometimes they can't look as nicely, the cars. We're seeing this with the EQS Mercedes, which is a spectacular car and has a spectacular aerodynamics, but there's a little bit of a compromise on the look and it's something we still have to get used to. The Audi Grand Sphere prototype glides over the roads. The luxury sedan is almost twice as long as, for example, the compact VW ID Life. So which size of electric car is going to make the cut? We can't answer that question yet because we will need decades, not just to design and build the different possibilities, but also to experience them, to find out what people want, what feels best and what functions and purposes will be needed. The head of the Italian car design company, Pini Farina, presents a computer animation showcasing the first ever car designed completely digitally. Using virtual reality can accelerate the design process and can be adapted quickly to changing requirements. You define an experience for your client. The way in which we will use cars in the future is going to be very different. But also today is always different. It's already different. That means that even the way in which you have to imagine your cars, the processes and procedures are going to be different. We have spoken with architects. We have spoken with urbanists. We have, spoken, we have spoken with social scientists because we wanted to understand how the taste of people is changing. How would you use the car in the future? The head of Volkswagen agrees that the jury is still out on the future of the automobile. Will electric cars continue to indulge people's taste for luxury? Or will there be a radical break with tradition? Finally, we are back to radical design. There are innovations. We're saying goodbye to the familiar archetypes, speed, status. Geschwindigkeit, status. We have no objection to breaking new paths, but we have to stay highly aesthetic and extremely prestigious.
I think it's funny. Everything is on the table. We have to do all we can to keep things moving. And we have to do it in a way that the customer is convinced that's how they want it. Seeing as they don't know, we have to explore all possible ways to tap their emotions. In any area where technology is rapidly changing, there are no rules anymore. The rule book is being rewritten for everybody. And I think that means cars will, for the next 10 years at least, differ more from each other again. It's a good thing if the automobile breaks with the standard which is basically the big, fat, black SUV we see everywhere. Just like houses look different, and clothes look different, cars can look different too. Diversity on the roads, the excitement of difference. Mobility gets a makeover.